Hi, welcome to my latest video. Today I'm going to be fitting some spotlight to the roof of my Land Rover Freelander 2. You'll see on the front end here that this is plastic grille and plastic bumper, not really suitable for mounting spotlights on the front. Some people have fitted bull bars and things like that. Uh, I don't want to do that on mine. I'd like to fit some extra lights up here. Extra spotlights that come on with main beam. So we've got the standard main beam lights, which are, uh, are all right around town, but um, in the winter, out in the dark country lanes, it's, they're just not good enough, really, uh, even with the uprated bulbs. So what I would like is four spotlights on the roof, on a bar across, which come on with main beam. Very important, they only come on with main beam, uh, otherwise you're gonna get pulled over and get in trouble. So what I've done is bought some spotlights. I bought four of these Cree LED 7 inch 12 LED spotlights. They, they come in a sort of spot beam which is about I think they're 10 degrees angled beam uh, or, or a, a flood beam which is much wider about 45 degrees. I've gone for the spotlights because the, the standard lights give me enough light sort of at the sides, I want a lot of bright light directly in front of me. So there's four of those. They also come with a wiring kit. The relay, you see in here, there's a, there's a relay, a fuse, a switch as well. Quite a nice wiring kit. Uh, I'm not actually going to use that. Um, I'll show you why in a moment. But I've also got this piece of angle aluminium. So it's just, uh, it's just a little right angle aluminium bar which is going to go across. I'll put that across between the standard roof rails. Okay, so that's going to go across. So what I've done in preparation, as well as buying the parts, is if we just remove that, you can see I've drilled this metal end foot. This is a foot that's bolted into the, uh, the roof of the car. Drill that with a, a six millimeter hole here. The same on the other side. Drilled holes at each end on the metal bar. Now I actually cut this bar a little bit short. You can see that's a little bit close to the edge there. Um, so when you're uh, buying some bar and measuring it, cut it a little bit longer than you think you need. You always trim it down. And then what I've done to wire things up is actually connected a blue wire here. So I've actually cut in, cut a bit of the insulation tape off here, found the main beam wire in there, which uh, I think there's a blue and orange wire, I'm not sure, but it's uh, uh, you'll be able to work it out from the connector to the lights cut that and soldered in, so I've used solder with a soldering iron rather than bullet connectors which can get wet and fail, soldered in, re-insulated sort of with uh, insulation tape, wrapped that all around, this blue wire then goes up around, around the back of the fuse box and in to the battery compartment here where I've got a relay which is then connected via an inline fuse, 15 amp fuse to the positive terminal. Very important to use a fuse and the relay is then sort of tucked down there down to the wire. Okay. The wire then from the relay, so when the main beam comes on, when I put main beam on, the main beam bulb down here will uh, come on. This blue wire will go live, energise the relay and then this black wire here which I've run out around here with these self-adhesive cable clamps. Keep it in nice and tight. Up around here, under the hinge, underneath here. And then I've actually tucked it underneath the, the rubber seal all the way up, all the way up here, up the side of the window. I've actually put a bit of black insulation tape over the top of that but it just, you just lift the edge of the seal and tuck it underneath and 
a bit of tape just to hold it. And that then follows the gutter around here up to behind here. So I've got a bullet connector ready to connect into the lights. So what I'm going to do now is drill holes in this angle aluminium bar. There's already a couple of holes in here. So what we need is a 10mm hole for the actual spotlight to bolt in and another 10mm hole for the cable to go down and then underneath I'll join the cables up, connect them up to the cable that's uh, coming up to the wire that's coming up to the, uh, to the, to the foot of the roof bars. Uh, so a drill, a selection of drills here, I'll start off with 3 and 5mm and finish up with 10mm and most importantly some balls. Right, let's get drilling. So what I'm going to do now is drill holes in this angle aluminium bar. There's already a couple of holes in here. So what we need is a 10mm hole for the actual spotlight to bolt in and another 10mm hole for the cable to go down and then underneath I'll join the cables up, connect them up to the cable that's uh, coming up to the wire that's coming up to the uh, to the, to the foot of the roof bars. Uh, so a drill, a selection of drills here, I'll start off with 3 and 5mm and finish up with 10mm and most importantly some balls. Right, let's get drilling. holes, eight 10 millimeter holes along here, uh, four for the actual lights, four for the cables to go down and then these small six millimeter holes at the end which will bolt it on, bolt onto the, uh, the roof rail feet. Okay so what I'm going to do now is actually fit the spotlights to this bar and then offer it up onto the car itself. Okay I've now fitted the spotlights to the bar, you can see here each one will be melted with a bolt into the angle aluminium. Just turn that over so you can see how I've wired things up on the other side. So I've used a, a nylock nut. The, the lamps actually came with a standard nut and a spring washer. I've decided to uh, use, use the spring washer and a nylock just to, um, just, just to stop anything coming loose. Uh, make sure that's uh, nicely, solidly bolted onto there. Uh, then wired through the cable through here with a bit of extra heat shrink sleeve uh, through through the hole. There should um, probably would have been better to actually use some grommets uh, in those holes, but I've added this extra sleeving here just just to give it a bit of mechanical protection as it goes through the metal hole. A um, couple of little self adhesive clips there. Each light, I've put the, the, the ground connection, the zero volt connection, uh, to the bolt of the adjacent light. And the reason for that is they all need to go in this direction to the, uh, to the plug there. Um, it just doesn't make sense to uh, split the, the wire. I'd have to cut the insulation very close to that hole in order to um, put the, 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 the ground connection to, to an eye. Uh, and a crimp eyelet on this bolt so it made more sense to go to the, the next lamp and then that's the plus there goes along here <coughs> and uh, and then same again the next light eye bolt on the, on the third one plus wires along here rather than try to daisy chain up these these positives um, with lots of extra joins uh, or crimps and bullet connectors what I've decided to do instead is run all of these cables along to a joint there. And the reason I've done that is I've 
encountered problems before when you have lots of mechanical joins like bullet connectors then water gets into them and you can, you can end up with the lights failing or interference on the radio really so I wanted to try to solder as much of this as possible so the, the, the zero volts are, are crimped to the, uh, to the bolts here but the positive, the 12 volt plus 12 volt uh, they all come along into here where I've actually soldered, I've actually uh, twisted the, the copper connectors together and put a big blob of solder on them, okay, so that they're actually soldered together and then heat shrinked as well um, to, to, to insulate it. Um, so, so they're all, all effectively the 12 volt cables for every light are soldered together with, with no bullet connectors into the light, so it's actually the the black wire here has been soldered there with heat shrink um, and, uh, and the same again here here now what I might do here is just add in a bit of extra mechanical protection there just so that the thread of that that, uh, that bolt there doesn't chew through the, uh, the heat shrink sleeve there maybe we can get some more of these little uh, self adhesive clips just to kind of Keep things might maybe put a, a bit of a sleeving or something over that thread to, to protect that, uh, to protect those those 12 volt wires. Um, so we go along here, we have another clip. We've got the soldered joint, and also into that joint, of course, is our fifth wire, which is the 12 volt coming into the whole thing. Okay, so that's the one that connects to the relay under the bonnet. So that comes along, plus the four wires from the light all soldered together okay now I actually had to use a small gas flame to solder that the soldering iron was not hot enough to melt uh, that much solder on five wires joined together they were quite uh, heavy heavy duty uh, wires uh, and the soldering iron just wouldn't do it so I actually ended up using a small small gas flame to um, to actually get enough heat into that to melt the, the solder this this clip here you can see is, is actually coming loose already um, uh, a cable tie here uh, for the positive for, for this light um, that's that's actually not doing its job I'll need to replace that one um, so that's it really that's the whole assembly in one piece there uh, with the angle iron angle aluminium uh, all the cabling nice and neatly tucked up behind uh, one possible future enhancement would be to bolt another another right angle piece of aluminium over this to make a box section with all the wiring hidden inside that's uh, something I could do I haven't done it now but it's, it's a possibility uh, for the future um, one other thing that I thought of uh, these lights can actually move because they've only got one bolt they can move about flex a tiny bit so uh, one option would be to rather than using this adjuster here is actually to have two holes with bolts going into to nuts you stick nuts up into this channel uh, and bolt the light directly to the bar okay uh, it's just so there's two volts per light so each light is solid now there's a, there's a couple of issues with that uh, one you lose the ability to adjust the light uh, through a coincidence the angle of the bar on the, the feet at the end of the roof rails um, happens to actually leave the lights pointing pretty much level dead ahead um, so uh, I could do that I could do that lose the adjustment obviously um, will mean the lights are solid they don't flicker or shake about as you're driving along uh, the other issue, which is something that um, people don't really think of, is that because of this piece here, you get a very, very small one millimetre gap under the light. And I used to have a, a long light bar on the roof with that long gap, and above about 30 miles per hour, the whistling was unbearable. A very, very loud whistling noise. Uh, until I put some tape over that gap um, to block it up. So if you've got lights on your roof or you've got a light bar and it's whistling, check for a small gap between the actual body of the light and, and whatever you're bolting it onto.
Right, what I'm going to do now is get this mounted up onto the roof. I've put a couple of uh, bungee cords there just to rest, rest the metal rail on so that it doesn't uh, damage the roof. I'll get up there and get this bolted in. I've offered up the lights and the bar into place, put this bolt here loosely in. Got a 10mm spanner there, 5mm oven key, and behind there you can see there's a nylock nut underneath. I just need to uh, now do this up. I should stop filming while I do that, and then the whole thing will come crashing off. Right. Done the other side now, tighten that up. That's nice and tight. So we've got our bolt there, nut underneath, nylock nut. This is nice and solid now. Take these out. Put the, uh, put the foot cover back on. So you can just see, just before I replace this, you can see where I've drilled. So there's this little uh, casting uh, blob there from, for, or reinforcing rib, whatever it is. Uh, from the manufacturer of this um, aluminium piece and we're probably about 10 millimeters 10 millimeters down and then in the middle of this this sort of channel here so that that's where that's where I've drilled and that cover and then go onto there and just give it a bang and that's it so what I'm going to do now is go to the other side and connect up the lights and then we'll test them out Okay, so I've now connected that up, so that bullet connector goes into this one. I've also hooked that onto this little uh, self-adhesive clip. Um, put a little bit of extra insulation tape there, just, just because the wire runs close to that edge, there's a bit of a sharp corner there on the end of the aluminium bar. I don't want that uh, wearing through. I think um, I might add some, some insulation tape or, or some heat shrink sleeving over the top of this bullet connector because if water gets into there then it, uh, it, it might, might uh, corrode the, uh, the connection there and uh, cause issues. Uh, there's quite a, quite a lot of current flowing through that connector so I don't want any uh, high resistance in there. I want a nice clean solid connection there that, um, that, 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 that can take the, the, the necessary current. Um, but that'll do for now. Um, I can always insulate that a little bit more later on. Let's, uh, let's just have a look at what we've got here. So the bar goes across, it runs fairly close to the roof. There's about 8mm, uh, about 8 millimeter, eight to 10mm gap underneath. That's nice and solid now. Um, there is a little bit of flex, a little bit of movement in the lights there because they are bolted with one bolt. Um, the, the, the comment I made earlier about using two bolts would reduce that, but uh, hopefully when, uh, when it's dark, we're driving with, with these lights on on main beam, hopefully we won't see too much flickering. You see it actually gets a little bit worse on towards the center, more flex in the, in the, in the metal bar. Um, hopefully they'll be fine. So what I'm going to do now is go around and uh, start the car. Put main beam on, see, see how it looks. Okay, so. Go over to main beam, right? Main beam. There you go. They don't look very bright from here. As I move around, don't forget the phone will uh, automatically compensate for the brightness. So the exposure will drop. Now it is daytime. It's a bit cloudy and overcast, but it is daytime. What I'll do is wait until it's dark later, and we'll see what they look like then.